Hello, my name is Lewis Martin, and I am here with Smith Patel and Elizabeth Marstella. Um, and we are going to be discussing the genocide's protagonists um, here for our podcast. Um, the genocide, obviously, being the Holocaust. Um, so, one of our main questions is how are victims, victimizers, collaborators, bystanders, resistance fighters, and heroic helpers portrayed? and our recollections and memorialization of the Holocaust. So we're going to be discussing what role did the characters of these works have um, and how is the voice of each of these groups that were discussed distinctive. Um, so one of our first questions that we were sort of wondering is how are the genocidal protagonists of the Holocaust portrayed in Sarah Kaufman's works? Uh, which members of that story played vital roles how does this affect an outsider's view of the Holocaust? Um, in reading Sarah Kaufman, um, she becomes the, a victim of stolen identity. Um, Mame in here is seen as either a heroic helper or a thief, but I think that t t two things can be true at once. You know, she was a helper in taking in the family of the Kaufman, family mother and daughter, but at the same time she was a thief because she, she changed Ka uh, Sarah Kaufman's entire regimen to her food, to religion, to her life and she was allowed to go out because she did um, look somewhat like Mame. Um, the mother was a victim of just a stolen life completely because she lost everything from her kids to her husband to her own identity where she couldn't even leave the home for fear of reprisal. Um, Kaufman's works portrays the life of women and children of the Holocaust. Her works show like extensions of the Holocaust, Holocaust. So it wasn't only the shootings or gas chambers or crematoriums that killed Jews in their culture. It was also people that made it out but they could never be Jewish again. And both of these equally cut off the future or tried to cut off the future for Judaism. Um, and both were just as horrendous. So, Yeah, um, one of the big differences I saw between um, Rue Ordinaire and something like Schindler's List where the protagonists were portrayed is in uh, Schindler's List, you really saw Schindler was a, just a heroic man, like, revered by everyone. And then, um, Rural Ordinaire, Meme was kind of a controversial figure, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. You don't really know if she should be celebrated or if she should be um, uh, kind of blamed for what she's done or how she's affected the life of um, Sarah. So it's very different. I, I see a big difference between how those two protagonists are portrayed and, like, in, in many other works as well. Mm -hmm. And something else, for most of these works, when you first go into it, you think of the Holocaust, and the first thing you think of is the death of humans, you know, the death of culture. But this work really showed the genocide of her innocence. Um, she was just a she was just a child, and uh, for the most part, aside from her father, her family stayed intact, um, other than mm -hmm. her going to the the host family. So it wasn't like she was sent to a camp, yet we still see this struggle. We, see, we still see how hard it was for her. And this is just one of those secondhand effects that you know, the average person just wouldn't think of. And so I think Kaufman's work really brings this to life. Um, so our next question um, is, what are some differences between firsthand narrations of the Holocaust and secondhand accounts, such as Mouse? I think in Anne Frank, that's like a very first-hand uh, account of the Holocaust, like how the life changed. I think it's very different because we see, like we have a first-hand, it's a first-hand account, so everything is very accurate. Everything we see happen is like, actually like there's there's no uh, like say-so and if there's something different that happened. In something like Mouse, since it's, it's written through Art Spiegelman, who's the son, it's it, we could argue it's not as like accurate as the life because it, his perception probably taints some of the perception that uh, his dad uh, had. So that uh, I think that the it going down the line from one person to another, the story kind of changes. So it might be different than Anne Frank, which is a first-hand account, very accurate to what happened in her life and how she lived it. I agree. I agree that uh, Anne Frank was what we consider a prime source because it was in the moment right there. And then uh, when you hear Art Spiegelman speak, he's speaking from a, um, almost like a deep, dark, like hurt place because you know it's the suicide of his mother, and then his father, which were both survivors of these camps and um, these atrocious events. And so 
you gain all of that from them, that emotion from your parents, and then you yourself are struggling to understand, and then you try to tell the best story you can, but you're right, do you know that you're given a, an accurate account of the Holocaust, or are you more so given an accurate account of someone else's Holocaust, so to speak? So. Mm -hmm. And in works such as Night and Survival in Auschwitz, it's that here it is, this is how it was, I'm gonna give you the facts sort of vibe, um, and then when you have something like Mouse or Rue Ordinaire, Rue Labat, that's written years down the road, mm -hmm. they can really craft their emotions. So it isn't just a, a first-hand narration of certain events. They're actually trying to set a mood. They're trying to use their tone to convey emotion. So there's a little bit of a difference between you know, the craft of the authors. Um, when it comes to that topic. So the next question that we have, what moods did the main characters and the protagonist give off? And how did this play into the likability of the character or the novel or just, you know, how did it change your perception of the Holocaust in general by, you know, getting the accounts of some of these people? When I think about the moods of the character, I reflect the protagonist, I really think about Mouse first and Vladek. Because when you think about someone who survived, you, you always like, when you think about someone who survived these events, you think about someone like you respect and like you honor and like you think they should be like a very good person. But like we meet Vladek for this first time and he's very bitter, he's very, he's very racist, he says like terrible things about his wife like, and it's just like the first time you, like you expect something from a protagonist but you see Vladek and he's just like not what you like. It's not like he's a good person on the outside. Even though he's been through these atrocious events, you like learn outside like, oh, like, even though he, he survived these events and he should be honored for it, like what he's been through, he like carries some of these bitterness in him and it's just like, this mood, like, this mood he carries, it's just something, it's very uh, odd to like be, think about him like as a good person if he's like, says some of the stuff in the book. And I feel the same way. I'm also reading The Shawl with Rosa. Um, even though that was a fictional tale, you, you get very frustrated with them because y you understand that they went through something that no human could ever relate to, yet you're still thinking you want them to be just this person, their typical story of, yes, they went through this thing, but it, in the end it made them a bigger person, in the end it changed their life for the better, but this class really gave you the reality that their lives did not get any better afterwards. They were still just scarred and emotionally tainted. Um, and even with, um, you know, Sarah Kaufman, I, most of the time you just hear about children and how innocent they are. And you just want to think, oh, well, I can give them a pass for everything. But I was, I was very annoyed with Sarah Kaufman um, a lot of times reading that book, like, why don't you just pick one or why are you trying to make this a game you know it and and that also goes back to writing it second hand they were really able to show that discomfort um when when they were crafting it rather than just telling you okay this is what happened they were they were able to portray their emotions and their feelings when i think of moods i i think of uh lady cell and uh primo levy and more in, in Primo Levi when he speaks of um, uh, certain characters at the end, and you want to believe that the, all the survivors were the good people, so so to speak, or that all the people that died shouldn't have died, and no one should have to go through any type of genocide such as this for, for the reasons that it happened. But what I mean to say is that um, he even spoke of a guy who was very uh, conniving and um, manipulative and that's how that man survived and so when you read that and you know he said that guy survived and I never want to see him again kind of thing and you wonder like yeah so it really wasn't what you did it really was a game of chance almost of survivors so the people that survived could have been characterly and, and morally good or characterized and morally bad and you don't know and so I think of moods like it didn't matter you know if they lived or died it just they were still people, good or bad. And so we've got time for one more question here. Um, so the question is, how was Sarah Kaufman's work different from Anne Frank's 
um, diary account of the Holocaust. Uh, Anne Frank's diary gave kind of a, she gave a different account than Kaufman. And this is obviously due to Anne Frank in the moment, uh, you know, from a 13 to a 15 year old. And then we hear Kaufman in her 60s giving her account from th that age as well. Um, but Anne Frank's heroic helpers, they did all they could do to keep the Jewish family and Judaism um, intact. And I realized that the Frank family wasn't uh, well practiced in Judaism, but they were a Jewish family and their helpers um, did not try to change that in any way. They still brought them food, allowed for them to um, observe whatever religious observances that they held. Um, and I think that Meep and Beth were like almost like resistance fighters in the fact that after the fact when the Frank family was taken away, or the Frank and the, um, the eight the eight that were victims in this um, secret attic. <laughs> and the annex. Yeah, the annex, secret annex, thank you. Uh, when they were taken to the Gestapo, she went down there to try to figure it out and get them back. And I'm like, that's definitely courage under fire. Um, in the diaries, we see victimization from a completely from completely immobilizing this family um, from life. And in the end, some of the members were gassed, and all but Mr. Frank died uh, from disease only a month from liberation. So um, it was, that was how she was different than than Kaufman. Yeah, uh, I agree with you when when you said. Um Anne Frank is very in the moment. She was writing down, uh, right, like right as like she was going through the events. And Sarah Kaufman is really different because she was writing in the future, and because she wrote it so many times, so many years in advance, it really taints your memory. Like not as not everything is as uh, you remember it. So therefore, her her account of her account of the events she went through is going to or is really going to be dependent on the life she lived. Like she she's going to interpret her past events through the things she's been through in those like in that amount of time mm -hmm. while Anne Frank it's it's she wrote it while she was living it's it is as it is it's like verbatim that's what happened there's no like like as I said before there's no like um it's like we don't really doubt anything there is wrong what she said like there's no to her her view is not tainted in any way. Right, you have time to pick out uh, what you want to remember. Yeah. And I was going to touch on that as well, you know, it, it shows the ethos of the two authors. Anne Frank, no one really questions her credibility, whereas, you know, Kaufman, that's, that's one of the discussions is, is this what actually happened? Um, so that just shows how much, how big of an impact the time that you write these stories has on the works, you know, and the credibility and what the readers get from it. So that is all the time that we have for today. So thank you, Elizabeth and Smith. Uh, this is also Lewis Martin here. We just discussed the genocide's protagonists for English 282.